Welcome back to today's video. Today we are going to be discussing beet kvass. So I hope you'll stick around to learn a little more about this nutritive drink from Eastern Europe. you probably already know what beet kvass is. But if you don't, it's my hope that this video will be a help to you. So for those of us that have this book, Nourishing Traditions, Sally Fallon talks all about different tonics and methods of lacto-fermentation. And beet kvass is just one method of utilizing lactobacillus bacteria in order to make enzymatic, healthy, probiotic-rich beverages for you and your family. I first heard about this beverage many years ago when I bought this book, almost 20 years ago now, and I have enjoyed making it at various points throughout the years. It's delicious if you like the taste of beets. If you don't like the taste of beets, you can always add maple syrup or some sweetener following fermentation. But I personally think this kvass has kind of a salty, savory taste that really is a joy to my palate personally. It is an acquired taste, so it might take some time to find pleasure in drinking it, but I really believe it's not hard to like it all. A couple of days ago, my daughter asked me as I was sipping down a hot cup of coffee, she said, Mom, why do adults like coffee so much? It's so bitter. And I thought that was really interesting because she observed me drinking my coffee black and just enjoying every sip of it. And it is an acquired taste, it's bitter. But for those of us that enjoy it black, we can appreciate that bitter taste and it just does something to make us happy, right? Well, beet kvass, in my opinion, is similar to that. It's kind of an acquired taste, it takes some getting used to, but once you start enjoying it, it really is a pleasure to drink. And it's a very healthy beverage as well. So to start off making this tonic, we're going to need three beets, and this is a time of year where beets are probably coming out of the garden, so it'll be a great opportunity to put those extra beets to good use. You'll need a good sea salt. You will need a whey or a starter culture of some sort. I don't have whey at the moment because I'm not currently making yogurt or kefir, but I am making sauerkraut regularly, and sauerkraut juice is another starter that you can use to make this beet kvass. Sally Fallon talks about how to make whey in her book, so if you have more questions about that, you can check out her book. And then you will need a half gallon jar to start your beet kvass in, and water, and of course time. So to get started, we're going to peel and chop our beets into about one inch size pieces. You don't want them too small and you don't want to shred them because the kvass won't work well. You want to cut them up into about small one inch size pieces. So let's get started doing that right now. Now something that's really interesting about this recipe is that you can actually get a good two to three batches out of it. You can use these peeled and chopped beets over two to three different times. And then once you're done using them, you can just go ahead and discard them or put them in your compost pile. You will notice that if you choose to reuse the beets a couple of times, the beet kvass won't be as strong as the original batch, but it is a great way to make good use of beets nonetheless. One thing you will need to do if you reuse these beets is you'll need to save about half a cup to a cup of the original liquid in order to remake the recipe and then you would just add the same ingredients all over again. The good news is you won't need to add any new beets for the next two to three times that you try to make your kvass. Okay, no one ever said peeling beets was a clean job, right? It's kind of messy. So I've gone ahead and I've peeled this one, and now I'm gonna chop it into about one inch pieces. Another book alongside of Nourishing Traditions that you might really enjoy is a book by Sandor Katz, and it's called The Art of Fermentation. And in it, he talks about kvass as well, and he references Sally Morale Fallon and her recipe and her methods. And that's a really helpful book if you're trying to learn more about the science and art behind the fermentation process. I highly recommend that book. It's a big book with a lot of information, but it's great to add to your library if you're interested in this process. All right, there's our last beet. Okay, so we've got our beets all washed and peeled and chopped into one inch pieces, and they are now resting in our half gallon jar. And now we're gonna add the whey and the sea salt. So we will need a quarter cup of whey and in this case, as I mentioned, I am using sauerkraut juice. So this is a quarter cup of sauerkraut juice. And then we're gonna add one and a half tablespoons of a good sea salt. 
I am using Redmond salt, which is what I use for all of my ferments. So here's one tablespoon and a half of a tablespoon. And now we're gonna just kind of mix it together in the bottom of our jar. And we're gonna add water to this jar up to the neck of the bottle. I am using filtered Berkey water today, and I recommend that you use filtered water as well. Okay, we've filled up our half gallon jar, and I actually have the perfect spoon for such a time as this. I bought this years ago, and I love it. And I'm just gonna use it to stir together the whey, the water, the salt, and the beets at the bottom. You can also just kind of give it a shake if you don't have a Willy Wonka spoon like I do. Okay, and now you're gonna let our beet kvass sit on the countertop for the next two to three days covered. The amount of time that this ferments will depend on the temperature of your kitchen. Lacto-fermented products really do well in about a 72 degree Fahrenheit kitchen. So depending on the temperature of your kitchen, you will let this ferment for approximately two to three days. Once two to three days have passed, I will open it up, give it a smell, give it a look, make sure everything is as it should be. Then I will go ahead and strain out the liquid into a new jar, leaving one extra cup and the beets in the bottom of this jar. After the original batch is filtered out, you will put it in the refrigerator where it can be enjoyed. All right, friends, that is it. That is how to make a delicious and nutritious beet kvass. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video and that it's been helpful for you in your homemaking. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as usual, I look forward very much to seeing you in another brand new video soon. Goodbye for now.